In this section of the course, we will be discussing fetish links. Not just fetish links, but energetic connections between you and your target. And how we can create something, a sort of a container, a vessel, if you will, to get you the strongest connection to your target that is literally like having them physically in the room. So first off, let's, let's discuss a couple of fetish links that we're all familiar with. So firstly, um, one that is completely universal, and that is the image of your target, a photograph. Um, now, other than the actual photograph, you can use their name. You can also use other information about them, such as their date of birth, such as even the name of their parents. All these are factors into the person's life and therefore they're all factors into the person's energy. That all these things have a certain energetic signature. And if we use these things and, and, and actually apply these things to the ritual, we're picking up on that energetic signature and we're mixing it within the, the astral cauldron of the spell if you will, to have a more direct effect on the target. Now, we can also get into other ones which are a little more intense and which are a little more potent. For example, an item that belongs to them. Usually this will be done with an item that they use quite a lot or hold on their person quite a lot. So, for example, right here, for example, this chain right here, um, this would belong to your target and therefore if somehow you were able to take it or find it, okay, let's say, let's say something like that, you have a direct link to them. Although I would recommend not to hold it uh, without gloves because you don't want to go putting your energetic signature all over these things. Another one is uh, an even more intense one, their actual bodily fluids. So for example, I know people who have actually had sex with their targets and um, are able to still have sex with their targets that they're trying to do baneful curses on. Believe me, this is a weird world and I've experienced some weird instances and circumstances like this where they're able to take those fluids, such as sexual fluids, um, blood is a very intense one as well. Saliva is a very intense one as well. Uh, somebody's hair, uh, dead skin, uh, their actual fingernails, pieces of their clothing. If you, can, if you can get any of these things, you will have a connection to the person. What I will do, and I'll explain this to people that don't have access to all these things, I'll usually tell people to take a photograph of the individual and if possible to put their name on the back and if possible to also put their date of birth or put any other information that is also an energetic signature to that person. Now another interesting thing that you could possibly do is let's say let's say you work with this person let's say you work with this person Let's say you let's say you work in an office or a factory or whatever. If you can take like a cigarette butt that they've smoked and thrown away, you can also use that too. Um, you can even use things like pieces of paper that they've written on, so their actual handwriting. That's intense too. You can use all these different things. How do you apply these? Um, well, you can apply these in, in rituals simply holding an object of somebody in your hand and getting in touch with that energy is the potent thing to do. So like with the candle spell, for example, if you held the object in your right hand and you focused on the energy contained within the object, you're, you're actually getting in contact with that person. You're, you're getting a, um, a energetic signature and you're picking up on it, almost like a spiritual echolocation, which narrows your perception, your focus, and, and really locks you on to that subject. So when you're staring into the flame, you can have a much more direct uh, link to that individual. Let's say you're using um, a poppet. Let's say you've made a, um, a actual doll out of clay, a uh, figure out of clay. 
you can take uh, like this like fingernails and hair and you can put it inside the clay or you can put it inside candle spells that you make what else um, you can do you can do this all different ways for example I've taken a clay doll and I've actually taken a photo of the individual I've meditated onto it for a while and done this to really pick up on the energy until it it intensifies within the image and then I'll burn the photograph and I'll actually take the ashes and I'll um, put the ashes into the clay and I'll rub that in and I'll mold it so then you've got an energy signature already into the doll and then you can begin engraving the name into it like you would engrave someone's name into a candle for example these are all different ways that you can do this however let's talk about something that is literally like having them in the room shall we Right here, I have um, a Buddhist urn. Um, I use it for what I call spirit jars. Now, spirit jars were something that I channeled from a specific entity a long time ago while I was doing works of evocation, specifically using vessels and Id idols, so idolatry uh, magic. And the interesting thing here is the spirit gave me a way to create a vessel which was very intense. Not only can this be applied for creating a vessel for a spirit, you can also use it for creating an actual vessel for the person. If you can obtain something like this, that's perfect, that is great. So what you'll begin to do is you'll begin to fill this with all different implements that are fetish links to your target. For example, so I'll take the top off, as you can see. Uh, what I'll begin to do is I'll put in photographs of the person. I'll put in slips of paper with their name in it, their parents' name in it, their brother's name into it, their sister's name into it. Um, think about their favorite uh, cigars or their favorite cigarettes. You know, put one of them into it. Think about their favorite alcohol and actually close that and, and, and drip some of the alcohol over it, okay? Um, and what you can do is you can take the, their hair, pieces of their clothing, even if it's just a cut of their fabric of clothing. You can take jewelry, you can take their saliva. What I do is I create um, tiny little bottles, tiny little plastic bottles. And this is if I'm doing it with healing. So if there's someone that I know um, that wants healing done and they aren't here physically with me, I'll tell them to send me a little bottle like this. I'll tell them to either fill it with sexual fluid or saliva. I'll put some of their drops of blood into it, put some of their fingernail trimmings into it, um, and to put anything else like hair into it. If you can have something like that or a combination of all of those, put them into it. If they have, figure out their birthstone. Where is their birthstone? Where is the stone, the birthstone that there's that is associated to them? Take the birthstone, put it in there. All of these combined inside the vessel inside the container is going to create a very very intense connection to your target and then you could actually summon forth the person into the container like i said what you want to do is it's, it's no point just taking these items and just placing them in that is no point Except for when it comes to stuff like blood or saliva, the, when it comes to the bodily fluids, yeah, you can just put them in because they're they're already activated with our signature, so to speak. Let's say you got found, okay? I, I don't care what happened. I don't care if you stole it. I don't care. This is painful magic at the end of the day. This is predatorial. Let's say you took somebody's necklace, okay? Somebody's jewelry. Let's say you put on some gloves or let's say the, that you've placed this in a plastic bag, whatever. What I want you to do is just hold your right hand over it. Close your eyes, focus on your breath and visualize that person. Visualize where this jewelry is worn on their body specifically. See that, feel that. Imagine all the heat that, that must have absorbed, all the sweat this must have absorbed, all the times they must have brewed breathed onto this, passed their prana onto this, sweat onto this, passed their everything onto this. The hours, the minutes, the seconds, 
the amount of time they, they probably were just playing with it in their hands, how many photographs have been taken, see them wearing it. And as you do this, feel an energy. Okay, don't, don't create this, don't fabricate it. Be receptive and allow an energy just to build within the necklace or within whatever you're using. And as you do this, that energy signature, I want you to inhale it. Actually pull in the energy of that person. I feel it intensify within you and breathe out and push the same energy signature back into the item. Now you have people that might worry like, well, am I putting my own energy into this then? No, you're siphoning somebody's energy and you're putting that energy back inside. You're only pulling it into the self to experience it even more so. And that intensifies it. Our perception, our observation of things can increase them, solidify them. This is why the more and more we focus on the spell candle, the more and more success we'll have with candle magic. The more and more we focus on the, the uh, manifestation of the spirit, the more and more we can solidify it. It is our perception and our observation. So intensify that until you feel a very intense energy building on that object. And then you'll say something as simple as, I'm going to make up a name here, but something as simple as, the chain of Brandon Phillips, I place you within the vessel. And as you do that, feel the energy stirring around into the vessel. And then you can take a photograph and begin gazing into it. I actually suggest you place this on an altar and actually meditate on it. Visualize the person in all their emotions. Visualize all their emotions there when they're happy, when they're sad, when they're excited, when they're angry. Picking up on all their emotions because that's what the face is. The face is uh, a conveyor of their emotions. And get the sense of looking through their eyes. See their mouth moving, almost as if the one still image has become animated, so to speak. It moves, it talks. Have all these sensations running through you. I'll actually vibrate their name as a mantra, too. So let's say this person's name was Brandon. Brandon. As I, I, just as I done that, I felt uh, an energy signature building. You know why? Because in, in spell magic, in magic in particular, you can do two things. So you can say something vocally, something externally, and you can say the complete opposite internally. And that's what I did. I said the real name internally of this person right here. I said their name, I vibrated their name internally. So that was the effect that I had. Um, and then I'll take the image and I'll do the same. I'll place my hand over it for that building and building and intensifying. And I'll gaze upon the actual image within my hand and I'll state their name. And I'll say the image of, for example, Brandon Phillips. This is the image of Brandon Phillips, the image of your likeness, the image of your face, the image of your appearance, the body you have accumulated since birth, and the body that you will one day die in. I place your likeness and your image into the vessel feel that intensify and keep doing this keep doing this literally keep doing this so for the cigarette you know you want to visualize the person the cigarette butt that you pick up you want to visualize them smoking that cigarette when you see them smoking that cigarette that memory will trigger uh the the subtle energy signature to intensify within it keep doing all these things if it's uh, a person that you know rather well what is their what is their scent so for example when it comes to the spirit vessel for a demon Will you, or a spirit will use their fragrance, will use their oils, their favorite fragrances of incense. Use that too, So, but not with incense, unless they do have a particular favorite incense. Now, fair enough. 
If not, what perfume do they wear? What aftershave do they wear? What deodorant do they wear? And completely douse that all around the vessel until in the end, and you place it on there, on your altar or in front of you and meditate upon it, I'll begin scrying into the vessel, visualizing the image of the person, and I'll begin saying their name. And as I do this, I'll say something as simple as, Brandon Phillips, I call you forth. I evoke you now. Come, leave your body. Come, translocate. Come and manifest you. Distill your essence, distill your power, distill your energy, distill your memory, distill an emanation of yourself into the vessel, into the vessel, into the vessel. I pull you down, up, around, and into it. He who was born on the 2nd or the 5th, 1982, I pull you into the vessel son of margaret and daniel brother of alicia and susan father of and you get the gist right so we're doing these sorry we're uh, we're doing these things we're saying these statements we're calling them by even their full name use their full name Try to use their birth date. Try to mention family members. Um, if they're actually uh, a spiritual individual, if they're actually, for example, working with a type of entity, if you know this is, if there's a magician that you're doing this to in particular, and you know, for example, they work with, let's say, um, King Belial, for an example, you would say, uh, devotee of Belial, come down into this vessel, you know. All of these things are vital. All these things are a part of the, the persona, the ego, and the personality of that individual. And the ego and the personality and the identity have very intense energies here and now in this world. And that is what we're pulling to the vessel. There's already an intense amount of energy within the vessel, but that calling is going to intensify it even more so until in the end you have got this place on the this, you've got this place on the altar and as you scry into it what's happened to me is as i've scried into this if i'm using it for a person i have many of these if i use this for a person i'll see the entire shape completely blackened or covered with that that astral mist or that static rain and i'll see the actual face of my target the actual face of the person manifest here Another thing that you can also do is, whether or not you're actually buying an actual vessel is of no importance. You can, it could be a box, it could be a container. Do they have an actual box? Do they have a box? Do they have a favorite type of wood, a favorite type of material? Whatever, just add and add and add as much as you can, as much as you know about this person. I mean, I, I, had, a ta I had a target that I, I knew very little about and a quick Facebook search gave me enough information on them. I seen a picture of their bike. I printed that off and I put it inside the vessel. I seen um, a picture of their house and I put that in a vessel. I seen a, uh, a picture of the, their, their favorite um, bands and, and so on. And I put that in the vessel. These are likes and dislikes and all these various things that are associated with the core ego identity. And that is what we're, we're really attacking. That is what we're really attacking here. That person. Not that soul, that person. And um, I can tell you that if you involve or use this in your ritual, you're going to have scary, potent effects. Um, yes, you can use pot bits. And I was going to do a whole part of, of this main video, this part of the course, about, you know, um, puppets, about dolls and, and so on and so forth. And you can do that. You really can do that. But I would just be telling you what's already out there. I would be telling you what is already available on a quick internet search 
or a quick look up on some of the most basic Facebook groups and Facebook pages. Instead, I'm giving you something different. I'm giving you something which yields more of a connection to the target, something which is more potent and is going to be more beneficial for you to really have a strong connection to your target. If you can do something like that, then you have basically got the essence of somebody's spirit and, and you have literally torn off that spectrum of themselves and you have bound it before you into your vessel. Um, you can, if you're an actual, more of an evocator, so to speak, if you prefer evocation, you can actually evoke the spirit of the person and bind it to the vessel. It's, I'm not even gonna run over that in this section because it's as simple as like we just did, like calling that person, seeing that manifest, that person manifest like a spirit would in the room. And then with your right hand, and I'll always keep my right hand like this for works of domination. I always keep my hands like this. So if you can see that on my right hand, sort of like the um, horn effect here, and uh, I'll actually allow my two middle fingers to come like this. This was a mudra. Is that a mudra? Uh, yeah, I think it's a mudra. This is a mudra or a power sign taught to me by Abaddon. And Abaddon said, this is for all works of extreme domination, conquering, to always win the conquering battle, the conflict. And that's what it is. When you're summoning a real alive person or the spirit of that person, it's going to be a hell of a conflict. You know, now don't get this mistaken. Don't think that, well, if the spirit of the person is out of the body, or if the person is still alive, if you understand that our soul is in various aspects and various pieces and various compartment compartmentalizations of themselves. If you think of the soul, it's a collection of different things. Look at the amount of subtle bodies we have along. We have the astral body, the causal body, the mental body, the etheric body, whatever, you know, we have all these things. So you're sort of summoning subtle energies of each part of the person condensified before you as a evocable summon, summoning essence that you can pull into that vessel. And if you can do that, you can do something which will really make you a god in a sense. You, you're... you're you're literally conquering another soul. You're literally battling another soul because in evocation, specifically in binding a spirit to a vessel, it's not a battle of power. It's a battle of wills. And if your will falters, then you've lost the entire operation. So use that and push your will, push your domination, trusting your power and in who you are. You know who you are. And as you hold your right hand like this, whether it's visualized, whether it's tangible, whether it's manifest in the smoke, whatever, and you pull that essence down from above you into the vessel, then you have a very intense binding effect. People often say to me, all right, fair enough. That, that's all well and good. What if I don't have fetish links? My question is to you, why would you want to curse somebody then that you haven't got that much information on? The internet is a powerful tool. What if you don't have a connection to the internet? Look, a simple visualization of the person is going to give you a connection. It's going to give you a psychic link to that person if focused on heavily, if their name is spoken. This is just like a spirit. The image of the thing, which is the sigil and then the name, that is enough for an evocation. The image of the thing being the face of your target and the name. Okay? All these things like puppets, voodoo dolls, all these things are not, they're not just focal points. They're intensifying what is already there. It's intensifying a connection and it's creating more of a subtle, and if you're doing something as potent as the vessel, not just subtle, but an intense degree of connection to your target. So try, try and print off these photographs. If you can't print off these photographs, I mean, you can go to a library, you can 
go online and have prints sent to you. This shouldn't be really much of a Herculean task for you to do. Um, but if you can't do these things for whatever reason, then just simply a visualization of the person and the name and even saying their, their date of birth and um, saying these things in a ritual or in a spell is going to give you um, an enough of a connection to that person and to that target. So in this section, we run over the vessel of, of an, an energetic signature or an energetic connection or actual binding of them to it. You can go about this however you want. My job in this course is to give you all the options and these are the options. There are a variety of ways that you can do this. I have told you the best option and the more intense one, um, if you want to do that, great. If you don't, that's still great. It's all about finding your approach and how you resonate with it. Um, so yeah, let's move on, shall we?